In these slides, we'll talk about language as communication in terms of these three dimensions that are listed in blue font on the left side of this slide. These three separate dimensions are offered as a few additional lenses to use when when looking closely at students and student learning in the classroom to really identify where and why students might be struggling with content or might be struggling to communicate and interpret the communications of others. So we're going to start by talking about expressive versus receptive language. Then we'll think about concrete versus abstract language. And finally, we'll consider everyday language and the use of literate language in the classroom. Things like that. The expressive versus receptive language dimension is one that most, if not all of us, are familiar with already. So expressive language is about offering communications for others to understand, either through spoken language or written communication. And receptive language is about interpreting the communications of others, either by listening to others speak or by reading and picking up on information through text. What's useful about this for teachers is that it can provide a lens to help us understand more precisely where students are struggling with language in the classroom and the source of their struggles. For example, last week we started talking about students that might have difficulty decoding. So for a student who is struggling with phonemes and phonemic awareness, to the extent that that impacts their ability to decode words in reading, their receptive language in terms of gathering information from text, from following stories, and from being able to recall and comprehend stories is most likely compromised. For that same student, they may or may not demonstrate a similar difficulty in expressive language. So thinking about the distinction between expressive and receptive language for a particular student can help a teacher really think about what are the ways that that student needs to be supported so that they can participate in the classroom more meaningfully. The next dimension we'll think about is concrete versus abstract language. Some of the language we use is concrete. It refers to things that we could either touch see or visualize fairly readily. Dog, trophy, flowers. At the same time, some of the language students are called upon to interpret and to use is quite abstract in nature. Feelings, some of the big ideas in many of our lessons are abstract. Things like recycling, things like immigration, topics like justice. Thinking Thinking about the distinction between concrete and abstract language in the classroom can give us clues as to exactly where and why students might be struggling with content and what we might be able to do to support them. For a student who's able to, to process and produce more concrete language as opposed to abstract, that student might benefit from having some scaffolds in place for them that make connections between the abstract and the concrete. The notion of recycling could be presented with some objects that are recycled or to be recycled to bring a more concrete element to an abstract idea. And in so doing, that student may be able to bypass a potential weakness in using and understanding abstract language with the knowledge that they have and the comfort level that they might have with something more concrete. And finally, there are very different demands placed on students' use of language in terms of their everyday, casual, automatic language and the language they're asked to use in the classroom and at school. For students, when they're on the basketball court or when they're with friends, they're, they might be quite strong in being able to communicate, express themselves, and understand the communications of others. But they may really struggle with using language that's specific to school. Now, I saw in our discussion last week in Collaborate and also on several of the Quick Write response prompts that people are starting to really think about the demands Common Core places upon this literate language, this language of schools. Notions of evaluate, compare, synthesize, that students are expected to understand what those terms mean and how to use them in the different classes and content areas of school. A student that might show up in the classroom as really struggling to understand what language means and how to use it 
might actually demonstrate a strength in everyday language. And so it's important for teachers to be able to observe students in multiple settings and or engage students in the kinds of conversations that will allow them to demonstrate how they're able to use language in these different ways so we can really get a close understanding of what a student's strengths are and where their struggles might be. Watching this mini lecture, please download the slides and follow this link to meet Seb. And in this video, Seb will talk about his challenges and struggles with language and the ways that's impacted him socially and as well as in school. So as you watch the video, please consider these questions. Think about in what ways does Seb struggle with expressive and receptive language? What strengths or challenges can you identify in Seb's use of everyday language and literate language? And then please also think about, does Seb seem to be more challenged by concrete language or more challenged by abstract language? These thinking questions will help you as you prepare your response to the discussion forum prompt for this week. And I also encourage you to make sure you read chapter 4 in the Pullman text as you prepare that response because it will give you some more information about the links between language and particular and many of the other constructs. So memory and attention, of course, we've already found out quite a bit about in Course 2. And then you'll also get a chance to see links to some of the other constructs that you'll be thinking about in more depth over the course of this year. I hope you have fun with this assignment. Good luck, and I'll see you soon.